Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Keynesian theory of income, output and employment for UGC NET. According to this theory, at short time period, income and employment can be determined by aggregate demand and aggregate supply. According to this theory, at short time period, income and employment can be determined by aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And according to this theory, aggregate demand is very important because increase in aggregate demand can increase output and eventually employment and income will also increase. For example, aggregate demand increase. As a result, production also increase and it will generate more jobs in economy. As a result, employment will increase and it will give boost to national income. Now we will see assumptions of this theory. Short time period. This theory only applicable in short time period. Perfect competition in economy. This theory assumes perfect competition in economy. Close economy. According to this theory, there is no international trade. Labor is only variable factor according to this theory. Government intervention must for economic growth. As we know, according to classical economies, there is no government intervention. But according to this theory, government intervention must for economic growth. And this theory assumes our technology is constant. Money illusion. According to this theory, people have money illusion. They see money only in nominal term and ignore how many goods and services they can actually buy with particular amount of money. Last is saving is depend on income and investment is function of MEC. MEC means marginal efficiency of capital. According to this theory, our saving depend on income and investment depend on marginal efficiency of capital. Keynesian theory completely depend on effective demand means effective demand play very important role in Keynesian theories. So what is effective demand? According to Keynes, effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. According to Keynes, effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. So we can say that we can determine our effective demand by two functions. First is aggregate demand function. In short, we can say that ADF. Second is aggregate supply function. In short, we can say that ASF. An aggregate demand function also known as aggregate demand price. An aggregate supply function also known as aggregate supply price. So first of all, one by one we will see what is aggregate demand function and what is aggregate supply function. First of all, we are going to talk about aggregate demand price or we can say the aggregate demand function. Aggregate demand price is amount of money that firm expect to receive from the sale of output which is produced by a specific number of workers. Please listen carefully. Aggregate demand price is a total amount of money that firm expect to receive from the sale of output which is produced by a specific number of workers. And whatever amount of firm expect to receive it all depend on maximum price which are consumer willing to pay for the product of this firm. For example, uh, there are 100 workers and they are producing 1000 unit and based on maximum price which are consumer willing to pay for the product of this firm organization expect to receive from the sale of 1000 unit is equal to 50,000 rupees means firm expect to receive 50,000 rupees from the sale of 1000 unit this 50,000 rupees will be called aggregate demand price now we will see diagram of aggregate demand function. As we know, aggregate demand price is expectation of employer from the sale of output. And aggregate demand price and employment have a positive relation. As employer expectation from the sale of product will increase, employment will also increase. Obviously, he will hire more employees if his expectation from sale of product is increasing. In this diagram, you can see on x axis we have employment and y axis we have aggregate demand price. When aggregate demand price is OP, employment is ON. But as aggregate demand price increase from OP to OP1, employment also increase from ON to ON1. So we can say the aggregate demand price and employment have a positive relation. As employer, employer expectation will increase from the sale of output, he will hire more employees. So this ADF will be called aggregate demand function curve. 
नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एग्रीकेट सप्लाई प्राइस और वी कैन से दर एग्रीकेट सप्लाई फंक्शन एग्रीकेट सप्लाई प्राइस इज अ टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी दैट फॉर्म मस्ट बी रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम द सेल ऑफ आउटपुट व्हिच आर प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय स्पेसिफिक नंबर ऑफ वर्कर्स एग्रीकेट सप्लाई प्राइस इज अ टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी दैट फॉर्म मस्ट बी रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम द सेल ऑफ आउटपुट व्हिच आर प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय स्पेसिफिक नंबर ऑफ वर्कर व्हाई फॉर्म मस्ट बी रिसीव्ड दिस अमाउंट because if firm will not receive this amount then firm will not able to recover its cost for example there are 100 workers and they are producing 1000 unit and wages cost for hiring these workers is equal to 35000 rupees and firm must be receive 35000 rupees if firm will not receive this 35000 rupees then firm will not able to recover its wages cost that's why this amount is must for a firm for recovering its cost so this 35000 rupees will be called aggregate supply price now we are going to talk about diagram of aggregate supply function as we know aggregate supply price is the amount of money that firm must be received otherwise they will not able to recover its cost that's why aggregate supply price and employment have a positive relation as aggregate supply price will increase employment will also increase same thing you can see in this diagram on x axis we have employment and y axis we have aggregate supply price here you can see as aggregate supply price is increasing employment also increasing and this curve will be called aggregate supply function curve in short we can say the asf curve you can see after this e point this curve become vertical what does this mean that means after e point if aggregate supply price will increase then employment will not increase it will remain constant at o and 2 point but why because e is full employment point at this point all people are fully utilized and after e point no more workers are available in economy that's why after e point even aggregate supply price is increasing but our employment is constant o and 2 point that's why after e point our asf curve become vertical now we are going to talk about diagram of effective demand as we know effective demand is very important for keynesian theories and effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function in this diagram you can see on x axis we have employment and y axis we have aggregate supply price and aggregate demand price or we can say the y axis we have receipts adf is this adf curve shows aggregate demand function this asf curve shows aggregate supply function as we earlier discussed at e point you can see aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function that's why this e point will be called effective demand point as we know effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function at this e point aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function that's why this e point will be called effective demand point e is our effective demand point but not full employment point no doubt e is effective demand point but not full employment point full employment point is e1 at e point only o n workers are working but full employment level we need o n1 workers that means at e point n n1 workers are still unemployed and this n n1 will be called involuntary unemployment in economy and according to keynes increase in aggregate demand can increase employment in economy and uh, aggregate demand depend on uh, c plus i c is consumption expenditure i is investment expenditure this theory applicable in short time period that's why during short time period our consumption will remain constant by increase in investment we can increase our aggregate demand and during this time period aggregate demand is already very low that's why private sector will not invest because their main motive is earning profit that's why during this time period government intervention is must and government will intervene in economy means government will do investment as government will increase the investment our aggregate demand will increase as a result our aggregate demand curve shift forward from adf to adf1 and we have achieved as e1 level e1 even full employment level here you can see 
our employment has increased from on to on1 at this e1 point is full employment point here our all labors are fully utilized after e point no labors are available in economy but how increase in aggregate demand increase employment in economy because when aggregate demand increase production also increase and it will generate more jobs in economy as a result employment will also increase in economy now is the level of real national income and output with the help of one more diagram this theory is about determination of employment income and output we have already determined level of employment now with the help of this diagram we will see level of real national income or output in this diagram on x axis we have real national income or output and y axis we have aggregate demand and aggregate supply this ad ad is aggregate demand curve as we know our aggregate demand include c plus i c is consumption expenditure i is investment expenditure this as is aggregate supply curve e is our initial equilibrium point but this is not full employment point that's why government intervention is must as government intervene in economies as government invest in economy our aggregate demand curve shift from ad to ad1 now it includes g also g means government expenditure now our equilibrium point is e1 e1 will be called full employment point at this point you can see our national income or output has increased from oy to oy1 now we will see criticism of this theory ignore dynamic changes in long run this theory only applicable in short time period and ignore dynamic changes in long run this theory assume capital and technology are constant and constant technology and capital cause of limited applicability of this theory ignore cost push inflation this theory ignore cost push inflation if firm is hiring more and more employees it will increase their wages cost as a result they will increase the prices of product and it will lead to cost push push inflation but this theory ignore effect of cost push inflation or economy and don't include international trade this theory only applicable in close economy and don't include international trade as we know international trade also very important for growth of economy ignore socialistic economy this theory only deal with capitalistic economy and ignore socialistic economy unrealistic assumption of perfect competition this theory assume there is perfect competition in, in economy but this is not always true so this is unrealistic assumption of perfect competition keynesian analysis is not empirical this uh, theory is not empirical this theory just based on ideas but not based on any practical experiment so this is all about keynesian theory of income output and employment i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care